Hi, my name is Jonathan Hopp. This is 10 Minute Go. Um, I teach one lesson on the game of Go for under 10 minutes, all right? Kind of making the game into bite sized chunks. And I hope you've been enjoying the lessons. I also hope you've been playing lots of games because that's the best way to get better at this game is to play lots and lots of games. I'll talk a little bit at the end of the video about some places you can go if you're having difficulty trying to find a place to play, all right? It's really important that you either go online or that you play in person, all right? That you get to use the game to make friends and meet new people. All right, today's topic. Well, actually, I'll let Patrick Henry introduce today's topic. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. So today's topic is all about liberties, all right? So it talks about mainly about mutual life and capturing races, which are both, both based on liberties. Let's talk about mutual life first. You'll hear people say mutual life, meaning when it's another way for our sons to live. So in an earlier lecture, I talked about two eyes, where I basically said that you need two eyes in order for your groups to live. I did mention there was an exception, however, and there is an exception, but I think now you're good enough to I can explain it and it will make sense to you. All right, it's called mutual life, or you'll hear the Japanese word seki, okay, but I like to use English terms as much as possible. Mutual life is basically what happens when your, your stones and your opponent's stones are stuck behind enemy lines and you share liberties, all right? So, for example, let's look at this black group A and this white group B, all right? We have black A, white B. All right, now, there's no way out for white. All these are black stones. This is pretty much cut off. And as far as black is concerned, these are all white stones. So they're cut off. So we're, cut, we're behind enemy lines, and I don't think black has two eyes, and white does not have two eyes either. And there are so few spaces in the area surrounding them that I don't think they can make two eyes. So two eyes is completely and utterly out the picture. Not happening, no sorry, Bob. Basically, what someone's going to die. Or maybe not. All right, let's try and see what happens. All right, let's say we're white, right? We want to try to capture black. Okay, let's give it a shot. Where would you play? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, first off, there's only two spots you can play, right? With everything else on the board, all these other spots have nothing to do with what's going on in the corner over here. So we only have, really only have just two choices, B9 or B8. And as far as we're concerned, they're both the same. If white plays B9, white's like, ha, ah, you only have one liberty left. But then again, white only has one liberty left, and it's black's turn, so see ya. And it basically is the same thing. If you play B8, nothing changes. Sayonara. All right, so it looks like from White's perspective, White doesn't really actually want to play anything in here because it will be suicide. So White, White will play somewhere else. Now, Black is like, hey, wait a second. You gave me an extra move. Now I get to play in the area, right? Maybe it will be better for me. Nope. If Black plays at B9, then Black puts himself into Atari because he only has one liberty at B8, which is right here. I'm making sure it's nice and clear. One liberty. Whose turn is it? It's White's turn. Gone. In much the same way, B8 is the same story, all right? There's, there's nothing to do. You're basically dead. So it looks like neither black nor white really has any sort of incentive to play anything in this area, all right? Because both moves result in their death. So both players basically sign an armistice. It's kind of like, you know, two countries who are at war with one another. They sign a treaty, basically saying, you know, I will not go into your, your neck of the woods here if you don't go into mine. And so that's kind of what we have here. It's mutual life. We count both of these groups as alive. They're not taken off the board at the end of the game. But the territory, these two spots here, is no man's land, all right? It's, it's kind of like uh, North and South Korea, the DMZ, in the middle, right? It's got all the barbed wire. It's got all the guns pointed at each other. No one lives there. It's between two long-standing warring countries. So none of that's counted as territory for either. So that's basically this point right here is not territory for either player. So this is all lost points. But... Black is not captured and white is not captured. They're alive. It's called mutual life. you also hear the word seki. Now, there's other ways. It can be a little more complicated than what I've shown you. Let's take this for example. White looks alive, right? White says, well, wait a second. I've got an eye at A9 and I've got an eye at G9. I've got two eyes. I'm totally alive. What can you do? Black can do a lot. In fact, I'll let you pause the video. I want you to think about it. What can black do to white that will make him cry? All right, it's quite simple. Cut. Okay, now look, There's this is a diagonal move, right? Look at these two stones. See? They're diagonal from one another. And if you remember my previous lecture, I talked about the diagonal move, which you'll hear the word kosumi in Japanese, very, very fancy. It has a weakness. You can, if you have a stone already here, you can play here, and then the move is cut. 
all right? This stone and this stone, this black A stone, and black B cannot directly link to one another without killing something in the process. If that's the case, the black place here, black has cut this white group at A from the white group of B. Oops, let me actually use the correct labels. And so with them cut, now white's like, well, wait a second, you played on the inside of my territory, so now I'm going to try to kill you. White can't. If white plays at C9, count white's liberties. How many liberties does white have? One. Whose turn is it? Black. See ya. Same thing on the other side, E9. Black will destroy everything. So it looks like white can't play on any spot that would take away black's liberties without killing himself in the process, which means that this is mutual life, all right? And that means that both black and white are alive, but all of these points are worth nothing. Okay, A9 is worth nothing. C9 is worth nothing. E9, G9, nothing, nothing, nothing. They're not counted for either player. So a lot of things times in the game is you're, you you look like you have a lot of territory, and then if your opponent makes mutual life, he can ruin your entire thing. Think about it this way. Let's say white had played at D8 to prevent that. Now white gets one, two, three, four, five points, plus one point for this dead stone, so six points. Where he is now in black plays, white gets absolutely nothing. All right, so you got to watch out for those sorts of things, all right? Mutual life can be pretty, pretty annoying. Now, sometimes you'll notice, though, that in order for it to be mutual life, they have to share some liberties. It comes down to sharing two liberties. Now, when you don't share two liberties, you have what's called a capturing race. All right, well, let me get to it. All right, we have, like, a capturing race. A capturing race is basically when both players cannot make two eyes, right? And they have to compete with each other to see who can lower each other's liberties to zero first. All right, and it's very easy. So, at, well, most of the time it's easy, actually. They can be very, very harrowing. I've just picked some very simple explanations. Let's look at A and B. All right, A and B, again, are behind enemy walls. There is not enough space for two eyes, and they don't share two liberties, inside liberties. So this is going to be a capturing race. One of these groups will die, okay? Whoever has more liberties in the end will win. So let's count the liberties. Okay, take a second, pause the video, count each group's liberties. Let's do black first. One, two, three, four. Black has four liberties. Let's count whites. One, two, three, four, five. White has more liberties, so it looks like white's going to win the capturing race. Let's Even if black goes first, let's let black go first. C4, now white has four, right? Black has three. White has three. Black has two. White has two. Black has one. White has one. Take. White was ahead by a liberty, so therefore white won the capturing race, all right? So all you have to do with the capturing race, they're actually quite simple, is you just have to count the number of, of spaces that you have on the outside. So black would have four, like this, and white would have five. Now, capturing races can be deceptive, all right? It's very it's easy to say, well, in this case, it's a very simple. I mean, easy to count the territory, right? Easy to count the liberties on the outside. It can get a little bit hairier. So like this, for instance, this is a little bit more of a complicated position. Let's say it's white's turn. If it's white's turn, then white will simply Atari black. Black has one liberty left here, and it looks like this black group cannot uh, attack the white group at A. Right? Let's say white group at A, black group at B. Black is pretty much dead now because even if black plays, you know, something like this, white kills everything, so black is dead. Let's say it's black's turn, though. All right, let's look at group A and group B. Group A is surrounded on this side and all sides, and actually this black group is taking away liberties. White's friends are behind black's wall, so it looks like these two, two groups are actually fighting each other. They're having a capturing race. Whoever plays here first will win, basically. So I'll pause the video, think about it. Where should black play to win the capturing race? All right, now if you counted liberties, this would be a little bit difficult. We count white's liberties. White has one, two, three liberties, right? And you may have thought that black only had two. One, two. Actually, he has more, and it's a little, it's really kind of cool. If black plays here, it lowers white's liberties to two, right? Let's count them again. White has one, one, two liberties. All right, now here's the catch. Can white play this? No. So white can't play that. Can white play this? Right? We take away liberty, right? This is an Atari, right? No, we capture. This is self-Atari. So the only move that white can really play is h1, because then if he plays h1, then he can play here, right? 
But after H1, black will take away white's liberty. White has one liberty here, and black human black share that one liberty, and black has this liberty. So black has two liberties, white has one now. So really, even though it only looks like black has two liberties, actually he has three if he plays the right move. Once black plays here, he has three liberties because it will take three moves for white in order to reduce black's liberties to zero. And in the meantime, white only has two, so therefore white is down by a liberty, which basically means he loses. All right, well, uh, like I said, I will talk a little bit about online Go. Uh, if you're having trouble trying to find a place to play, my uh, personal opinion is to play on the Kiseido Go server, KGS, gokgs.com, which is a great place uh, for English language Go playing. I mean, they have a good community. I've been playing on KGS for quite a few years. It's a nice place, good moderators, a lot of different players from around the world. It can meet a lot of different people from different countries. Another great place to go is IGS, the Panda Go server. It's, a, it's not as social as a lot more Japanese and Asian players who may or may not speak English, which is okay. Not a big deal. They have a little button you can pick to communicate with people. And last but not least, Taijem. Taichem has kind of a mix. You're going to find mostly Asian players, um, so it's the interface is not that bad. It can be a little harrowing to install, but just go to taichemgo.com. They, they do have an English version of their client. But like I said, my personal recommendation is the Kiseido Go, Go server if you're an English language Go player. It, it's just, generally speaking, it makes a little bit more sense. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I'll catch you next time. Remember, if you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button right down there. Go ahead and do it. I know you want to.